Aloha, world, and welcome to another episode of The Queer and the Queen. I'm Jacoby, act like you know me, Jones. And today I have two of my favorite people back with me again, Miss Nice Nasty from Instagram and TikTok and Miss Tilly from Instagram and TikTok. It is so nice to see you guys again. You always put a smile on my soul. How are you doing today? Fabulous. Fabulous. Look, you see me? I'm in motion, honey. I'm right. great. Come on for uh, both of us say fabulous at the same time. So before we get too far in this <laughs> video, I want you guys to drop down in the description box, ding on those notifications, follow us on social media, and make sure you subscribe to this platform so you can know when we post more videos. So today, the first topic we have is Big Brother just announced its first African-American male winner. And Miss Tilly, you have all the info for us. Tell us what's going on. Okay. Okay, so Xavier is his name. He's the first African-American winner of an original Big Brother season. Now, Tamar won Celebrity Big Brother season two. So she was the first, first, you know, black winner. Yeah, and Xavier, girl, so, you know, uh, kudos to Tamar, kudos to Xavier. I love him, he is fine. He deserved to win. Now, who was sitting next to him, Big D? Girl, why was he even there? He represented for the gays. So Big Brother went ahead and picked him last year when I auditioned as well. And they could have picked me and I would have actually worked my ass off to get to the top two. Girl, but- Let me ask you this. Year, what is, what's the concept of the show? Cause for people who don't know. Yeah. I mean, long story short, there's 16 people that live in the house together and every week they're doing comps to uh, evict each other out. Everyone has to choose, you know, who they want to evict. And, oh, but before they choose who they want to evict, when they do the comps, the head of household wins, right? So that's that one person that has control of the whole house at the moment. They choose two people to evict. So there's a the head of household, there's the two people that they want to evict, right? After that, they have a power of veto, a veto game, right? I'm sorry. They have a veto, so the two people in the chair, plus it's like four of the people, I think, play for the veto. So the two people in the chair still have a chance to win veto, get themselves off the chair, or the one of the four people that are also playing, they could choose you know, to use the veto on uh, whoever's in the chair. So it's very tricky, but at the end, it's $750,000 once you evict all these people out the house. But at the end, the people that you evict uh, choose the winner. So you have to evict them, but in a way that they still want to choose you. In the concept of reality TV and all of your passion, the Super Bowl, which is a reality moment in our life and history and, and, super, and football American. season every year, the Super Bowl has just now cast what looked like to me at first is all black cast of uh, the halftime show. It's Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and also Eminem. Now I will say Eminem is invited to the barbecue. So, you know, we kind of- All know, day. We, we, we love Eminem. I, I like him as far as a, a black opinion goes. But what I was thinking is, okay, so are we over this Keppernet stuff? Like they got all these black people lined up all of a sudden. That's what like, I, I was, was shocked. Like question. what what happened to the kneeling and to Keppernet and do the right thing and stand up for the powers of the people? Like are they, the celebrities just over it or the check must be fat. What do you think though, Miss Nice Nasty? Honey, I was thinking the same thing. I said, so are we not, uh, you know, um, right. boycotting the NFL anymore because of how they treated Kaepernick and anyone else who knelt in silence in peaceful protests, honey? Right. All right. Are we, are, are we just, look, at the end of the day, babe, the green stuff talks. What did they say in Coming to America? They don't mind the kind that jingle, but they like the one that folds, honey. Uh. Here, <laughs> the, the, let me tell you what the money has got to be right for them to have such a uh what do you call it mega stars a powerhouse well you know what though think about this all right i don't think i'm not gonna i, I want to say this correctly because i don't want to call them sellouts because i don't think that any of these people are sellouts but i think that these all these people have a number i guess i should say right because they're willing and i think they're all talented i love every single body that they mentioned in the lineup but i could see how Mary J. Blige gave in because I also how, saw how Mary J. Blige sang a chicken song on like McDonald's back in the day. You remember that? You know what I mean? Snoop Dogg. You know they, they're they're willing they're they're willing to be convinced for money. Snoop Dogg has had his face plastered on a lot of different things because he got a check for it. Dr. Mm -hmm. Dre has done the same thing. Eminem has done the same thing. And I am shocked by Kendrick Lamar though because what I was He's thinking. So because I was thinking about but, it and I was just like, what, what were you going to yeah. say? I was just going to say that 
Yes, they're getting a check for it, but what it's doing for the culture, honey. Well, the thing, I everything was, to have that many, you know, huge because stars. Maybe they're giving them the opportunities to do this show, and the constraints and restrictions are not that. Like, it could be, you know, a black. They might have the Black Panthers there for all we know, and Wakanda forever. You know what I mean? Like, maybe they're giving them, like, you know, what you get to express yourself freely. You know, I do remember hearing one of these fo football owners stating, you know, we handled the whole kneeling thing wrong. You know what I mean? So maybe we don't know what happened behind the scenes, but they have this consciousness that they are they they want to revisit the mistake that they made. You know what I mean? But another question is, do you forgive them? Forgive who? The, the NFL? NFL? Forgive who? Yeah. No. N no. Okay, no. you? It, but it's not about the NFL. It's about them and, like, what they're going to do. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of power in, you know, this whole performance that they're going to do. So I don't think they're sellouts. I just think, yes, you know, the NFL, that's a separate thing. But what they're doing is a performance. It has nothing to do really with the NFL. I mean, it's just a big, mm, you know, the biggest that's stage. That's not totally true. It's because... the biggest stage that someone can have. But that's so, not, that's you know, no, we'll no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not the biggest stage that someone can have. I don't it's think so. It's the biggest so. stage. Uh, you, you could go. I mean, that that people have hundreds played football. of millions of people. People have. Watch. Pay, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I guess when you include television, yeah. I guess you're right. When you yeah, include it, television, it, that 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 is on a a larger. The Super Bowl is on a very very large scale. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was in a Super Bowl commercial when I was 19. It, actually, you were. So I, I was oh. just researching the whole Super Bowl and cost and all of that. They're attracting yeah. 133 million views. That is so crazy. So that's that like absolutely insane. Yeah, that's half of the United States. About. Yeah, it is. But you know, oh wait a minute, hold on, hold on. It says Michael Jackson set a new precedent for halftime shows with a performance that attracted over 133 million views. This is Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Okay. So God oh. knows how many people are going to be watching it this time because if Michael Jackson did 133 million, honey, baby. 20 years ago, okay. right? Years and years ago. Right. One of the greatest okay. half times for that sure. Was really, that was really before the internet. It has so now that you can watch things online. Just as a side note, okay, and I know we're not talking about this, but I saw some BS online the other day that someone tried to compare the greatness as far as fan base of Michael Jackson and Drake. Honey, mm. Michael I saw Jackson. That too. Yeah. Michael Jackson was reaching people across continents without internet. People knew, know who Michael Jackson is without vlogs and blogs and YouTube. Okay? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. Man Don't compare had Michael to painting. nobody. Yeah. Everyone else, they came up in the era of social media. Okay? Yeah. Michael Jackson, honey, you are not on his level. So you guys cannot compare the two. This man built his empire just with his mm -hmm. presence, doing his shows, traveling across the world. Yeah, you know, so the I'm, thing, about that. I'm not a Drake fan, but um, Michael Jackson was a different kind of talent than what Drake is. You know what I mean? I do think that Drake is a talent in his own, in his but lane, but they're not in the same lane. No, they're, they're you don't compare Michael with nobody, honey. No. Yeah, but they're not. And yeah, exactly. They're not in the same lane at all at all listen yeah. michael can stand there and people were passing out they were fainting right there. right right they were fainting like right but no that's because power. that was because there was no internet and no social media there was just seeing him on magazine covers moment. and moments on the tv like if we're fascinated with someone now we can sit on youtube and watch interviews all day long and yeah. feel like we have a piece of them you couldn't do that before so when you have been fascinated about this man but no attachment or no you can't he's not tangible and he's in your country you know, it's a lot. You know what I mean? But yeah. speaking of rappers, since you brought up Drake, Nick Cannon, who we love, has a show now, right? Now, Nick Cannon's show is up for grabs to take over Wendy Williams' slot on daytime television because Wendy has not, as you we know, we talked about it here. She's going she through some better, things and she ain't getting better. One day I saw that she said she was going back to work on this day, and then the next day she changed her mind. I was like, I can't do it. So. I really feel like this could be the end of Wendy. I don't want that. I'm not hoping that. But what do you guys think of Nick Cannon's new show? Have you watched it? I love it. I'm team Nick Cannon all day long. I have not seen a show of his. I don't know I what show either. you're speaking of, of Nick Cannon's. Um, I do watch Wild and Out sometimes when my husband is watching it. And um, but yes. I don't know what talk show. I know he was in America's Got Talent and then that went mm -hmm. sideways. But a talk show, I don't know what 
that would look like? Like what will be his target audience? What kind of topics would they be discussing? Like, you know, when I watch Oprah and I'm going to get with Oprah, I know when I watch Jerry Springer, what I'm going to get Steve Wilkins, right. I know what I'm going to get, what am I going to get with Nick Cannon? He is talented. He is a brilliant businessman. Okay. So do you remember sure the Rosie O'Donnell show? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. you remember the Rosie O'Donnell yeah. show? Yeah. Nick Cannon's giving me very much Rosie O'Donnell. In a in a positive um, in a black man, you know, like course, funny, Rosie, like funny, fun, funny. loving, okay. daytime show. You know what I mean? I can see his guests being his friends from the entertainment industry, and then also, mm -hmm. you know, comedians maybe like a maybe in an Ellen direction where you do nice things for people in society and stuff like yeah, that. His show that. is based in Harlem. He's using a studio in Harlem, New York is where he films. And I work. really think I have I have big hopes for his show because I really like him. And yeah. I want to be yeah, on your show, Nick. Too. So uh, hit a brother up. So you know Hello. what? I would have loved for him to be like in a nighttime show like Jay Leno's and the Jimmy Kimmel's and like, you know, to have a, a um, a man of his magnitude on late night talk show. That's but what you I was. Know what though? That's what For I was. late night talk show, but, people but are daytime typically. Daytime talk show. Mm, I don't but, know. But you know, late night pe people are typically dirtier, potty mouther, and Nick Cannon's never portrayed that. Nick Cannon has never. He doesn't swear. I mean, I'm sure he does, but I'm saying like in his persona to the media and to the public, he's a poised gentleman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so yeah, he, he I, can, I, agree. I wouldn't see him doing late night. What do you think, though? We know you like Nick Cannon because you like black men, Miss Tilly. So what do you think? No, I actually like Nick Cannon because I grew up with him. He was on, I think, all that. Like, I was a kid watching him. So yeah, I've always so. seen him. Wild and Out. Wild and Out, super funny. He is the baby daddy of Mariah Carey for her twins. So I like him even more because of that. But he's funny. He has a good personality. He's very smart and witty. And he's a comedian. So, yeah. you know, daytime is perfect for him. He, yeah. he needs to make us laugh because we need to be laughing because Miss Wendy wasn't really making us laugh, you know, towards yeah. the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was more like, I don't know. She just seemed, I don't know, gutted. But then again, I would be uh, if my man did me like that too. <laughs> well, you know we love so. a good gutting, girl. You know we love a good Hello. Gutting. So in the conversation of Williams, we spoke about this earlier a few episodes ago, and it has been confirmed. Portia Williams is leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now, who do you think would be a good replacement for her persona? Before you said Sheree, and before we said, we know that one Olympian girl is coming on. But now, it's just, it's gonna, What there was a black Twitter went in on the whole Portia Williams concept, and it was just like, just in the show. It's not, like, it's not even gonna be good anymore. The show, like, it's just no that. Nene, no Cynthia, yeah. no Kim, no Portia. Like, the show is just a wrap. And... I <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. What do you think, though? I, I think don't. it has run its course. I, I think uh, Atlanta Housewives has run its course that, you know, we don't have the OGs and there's no one really up and coming that is giving what the OGs were giving back in the day. Of course, a lot of people, they were upset and saying that, you know, those women like Nene and everyone else, Sheree, they were making black women look bad or whatever the case may be. I don't know. But this is the reality, right, of how things are that, you know, things happen that way. I just don't know who's going to grab our attention to keep us in tune every single week to tune in for a new episode with the cast that I have looked at. Well, and Kenya's still going to be there. And Milo's that's what I was going to say. Kenya's still going to be there. And you know, Kenya is a how, whole... How interesting hello. Is Marlo. A, she, Kenya has she, a big personality. And who, Kenya? Kenya, yeah. yes, has a big personality. Marlo has a big personality. She's going to yeah. bring the drama. Now, they're talking about bringing Sheree back, which would be great. So Kenya, Marlo, Sheree... That's pretty good. If they bring Kim back, we're set. Nene, who's yeah. going to argue with who? If Nene not there, who going to argue That's with who? I, I, if, uh, so y'all ganged up on me a couple weeks ago when I called her a bully. No, no, and no. Now, she, no, no, now no, she, no she's not a bully. No, no, no. Now you admit she, no. in. No, no, I'm not admitting it. She's not a bully, but she will call bullshit out. That is what I'm saying. And that is what causes the argument and the confrontation or whatever the case may be. Because Nene calls bullshit out when she sees it, honey. And they I don't disagree. like that. I disagree so, because you can say anything a thousand different ways. So I think that the energy that Nikki that Nene exudes when she is calling the bullshit is bullying energy. Baby, well, call me a bully, honey, because I believe you're that not Nene, a bully. But I you believe know, that Nene is my spirit person, honey. I believe that her. Love her. her. Yes, love I love her, her too. She cracks me up. I love her too. I really do. But I do think that she can be a bully. 
Well, she's not on the show anymore. She's definitely not coming back. Also, so speaking I'm of Nene, definitely those, not coming back. We don't know. We back. don't right. know. She's definitely not coming back because. Nini is one of those people that are, in my eyes, I believe, will be some sort of permanent fixture with Bravo. That's just my opinion, that her hands will be in there somehow. With she something. might have a show coming up, Nini after Greg or something like that, because her- Nini finds love. Say, yeah, yeah, because um, well, she just listed her house that. for sale. I, I don't know why. I could assume that it's because she doesn't want to live in the house and Greg's not there anymore. It could be yeah. too much, but she just listed her Atlanta home for $4.1 million and she does not want it anymore. She's moving, it's a beautiful estate, but you know- Good. I don't her. know about this new season I, of Real Housewives. I, 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 I pray for her healing. I do love Nini, and losing a spouse has got to be the most horrific experience. And Greg was older than yeah. Nini. We know that. But still, he was still very young, considering that he died so young. So I, I pray for her healing, definitely. I don't feel that there's an interesting cast, in my opinion, this time around. Mm. Well, I'm still going to be watching because I have been watching <laughs> since season one. Well, you honey. have to watch it to give our viewers their update, honey. I will update the yes, people you on are, other stuff. You that are is your a housewife area. updater. That is, that, that and is your brother. position. And big brother, yeah. And big yes. brother, that is your position. Well, this has been a fun conversation with you guys once again. You know I love talking to you. You are two of my favorite people. Before we go, make sure you drop down in this description box. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree or disagree. We love to be challenged. We don't agree with each other all the time. So let us know. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. And don't forget to ding on those notifications so you know when we post more videos. Love yourself. And as we always say, don't forget to smile.